What's going on guys? We're here with Nina, the reptile manager at Nerd Today in their media room. She is going to talk to us about some of the stuff she does with the setups behind us. Take it away? Yeah. All right. Hi, guys. Um, so in here, we do everything. Um, we mainly keep like our sensitive stuff and things that don't particularly like a thousand people walking by them a day. Um, and I think we were interested in starting with the Cuban Idinals. Yes. Cool. So we will come over here. This far, far journey. Yes. Here, we can just pop this open. He wants to come out. So these guys are awesome. I'll do the overview on their personalities because they're fantastic. Except um, for when I try. Yeah, except for, right? yeah, it's okay. I felt bad, then I was like, oh, but they love me. Um, <laughs> it's Will's <laughs> giant hand going yeah. in yeah, there. Yeah, so I tried to film with them yesterday for you guys for the first video. <laughs> it didn't work out as planned, so I was like, they are going to get their own video. Yeah, yeah these guys are awesome. Um, so Cuban Nightingales are typically super defensive, angry little creatures. Um, and for whatever reason, um, these guys are super friendly. Um, probably more of an intelligence thing. We try to give stuff a little bit um, of consideration. So usually if you're kind to them, they'll be kind to you. Um, so this is Miho. This is my little male. Uh, you never really want to grab anything that typically is very flighty. Um, so this guy's wonderful. We have no idea how old he is, but he's super cute. Um, See, I don't know. What do you want to know about them? Well, um, we wanted to bring them up for you guys because back in Florida, they are, I mean, technically, they haven't done much research about how invasive they actually are, but um, they were introduced down there by us somewhere in like the late 1900s, I believe. And um, people had them in the pet trade. They would come over from Cuba because these are the... Cuban anoles, Cuban night anoles, um, and like she said, they do have aggression <laughs> issues, but basically they're very defensive where most lizards just run. These ones typically tend to hold their ground, so people kind of freak out about that, but it does cause a problem for us down there because they eat a lot of um, the native wildlife, um, baby birds, stuff like that, so some of our populations of native species have actually started to dwindle. And now here we are with these creatures along with iguanas and everything else <laughs> wonderful that thrives in our uh, tropical habitats. Yeah, Florida, capital of the world for invasive species. Yes, yep. so that's why we thought it was pretty cool that she's actually here handling them and putting a lot of time into it so it gives a different perspective on the animals and like she said, um, intelligence. So. Reptiles do have personalities, <laughs> as a lot of people tend to not believe. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that he's kind of checking me out, checking her out, so it gives, um, like I said, a different perspective on everything. This, this is a private room. This is a private room. Excuse the interruption. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can kind of go along with the intelligence, too, and they do say a lot of times that animals that tend to be a bit more reactive, as in aggressive or defensive, tend to have more intelligence. Yeah. So. Self-preservation. Yes. I've never personally seen a tame one, so yeah. I oh, cool. think it's, that's why when you stuck your hand in there yesterday <laughs> and pulled him out, I was just like, <gasps> I was dumbfounded. I, I really was. I was yeah. like, this is amazing. And I was like, I want these guys to be seen by people because that you. is so cool. Yeah, these guys are wonderful, and it's just, it's so cool. It's kind of similar with, like, the tokay things. You know, we have friendly tokays here because they're just intelligent. So if you give them a little bit of time, uh, they generally come right around. So are work. these guys, yeah, a lot of do work. they eat, you know, fruits and stuff too, or is it just insects? As far as I know, it's just insects. Um, these guys will, like, tong feed frozen thawed rodents, okay. um, which is pretty nice. Um, but, yeah, mainly just insects. 
these ones, these ones in particular are like really picky for whatever reason, um, <laughs> but it's fine. You know, like, I mean, like, have you tried giving yeah. them like the pace and stuff that you would give some of the geckos? Yeah, yeah we have tried. Um, they don't really show much interest, uh, so I kind of stopped that. But I think I offered it like for a couple months oh, okay. just to see. Um, but yeah. Fun fact, reptile brains, um, they process a lot slower than mammals and um, birds and stuff kind of do. Um, so when you teach them something or you're trying to get them to understand whatever you want, um, there's a little bit more lag time. Um, so you kind of just have to be extra, extra patient. Um, so think about trying to train a cat and then multiply that by 10. Um, and if you can do that, then, then you're pretty solid. Um, it's just a lot of patience on these guys. Um, what do you want to look at next? Whatever you guys want. I mean, okay. look, I know you guys both like frogs, so if you want to jump into frogs. Oh, you mean like our frog pile that we have on the table? Yeah. You, you, yeah did you get that ready? I maybe got that ready, so we <laughs> have some frog stuff to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. Do you want to start with these frogs or do you want to start with the Borneo eared frogs? Listen, this, this episode's about you two. This one and that one. What do you guys want to do? You really like dendro baits, and I, I do have books right here. I do like, I really do like Here you go. Start with these guys. So there's the Luke Malis. They're so pretty. So bumblebee dart frogs. Yeah. Bumblebee gonna... dart frogs. Oh, they shouldn't hop out. You can pop that lid right All right. Off. Yeah, I just want to make sure you were okay with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So in here we have some dendrobates, which are like some of my favorite frogs because I, besides fuzzy things, do really like amphibians. So come down and see these little cute nuggets. So, um,. In here, like she said, we do have the dendrobates, and you did breed these, right? No, these ones we got in. These ones yep. you got, got in? Okay. Working on breeding some, hopefully. So hopefully, that though is super cool when it gets into actually how, fro oops, how frogs <laughs> do breed. Um, there's a lot of cycles and certain things that have to go right um, for temperature, timing, uh, rainfall, stuff like that to actually get it to work. So um, that's pretty amazing, like how many amphibians in clutches actually happen for like everything that has to go right for it to work so yeah, yeah. most species of dendrobates only have one or two babies at a time though right no so at least um the dendrobate erratus or the the green tree frog mm -hmm. tree frogs wow uh poison dart <laughs> frogs um they actually lay their eggs, there has to be a certain amount of rainfall, and um, they tend to usually lay their eggs in, I mean in captivity, like if you put petri dishes and stuff in there for them, um, they'll lay it on that, and I, they come out in like liquid, like gel egg clusters, um, and I think in the one that I was working with, a few years ago, we had like 10 or 12 of them in one, so. Don't talk to me like you're talking to me. Well, you're talking to me like you're talking nervous. to me. Because <laughs> now, now you're making me nervous, and I feel like that was like super like meh. No, you're the expert here on this, not me. I don't yeah, you got it. Do amphibians. Okay, so. I just, I watched the documentary one time, and I remember them saying that they, which I thought was, wasn't true, that they only laid one or two eggs at a time for think, certain species, most species yeah. of dendrobates. I think there's like the... the and they the, lay them in those small pools of water. Yeah, like the pomelias, so like the thumbnails and stuff, lay like one or two and they carry the little children on them. But I think like the, uh, what's that, Ep epidites, epibates, or whatever, is so like the weirdo little guys. Um, I want to say they do like five or so, even though they're so tiny, but I could be really wrong about that one. Um, but yeah, I think Luke's, Aratus, Tink's. Glass, yeah, I think they have, we had like eight or ten of them yeah. in ours. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, so, so maybe so just different species probably lay yeah, different, different amounts of eggs and yeah. have babies. Okay. Yeah. So. Pretty cool. Yeah. Frogs are cool. Yeah, frogs like are cool. Frogs. Yeah. Summer likes to get peed on by frogs. Uh, it happens like every time. I yeah, know. it's inevitable. Yep. Okay, so as we said before, these are poison dart frogs for their common name. There mm -hmm. are different types that she was just telling me about. Yes. So, um... Poison dart frogs have that name because they are poisonous in the wild, but in captivity there haven't been any correlations with poison, so what researchers have come to the conclusion of is that it actually has to do with their diet. So um, in captivity they eat 
gnats, bugs, so then you can talk about your... Yeah. Oh, yeah. What we have here. Super handy. I found out recently that some people have to collect their bugs to feed their dart frogs. Sweeping. Bugs I don't sweeping have every to. Day. <laughs> uh, I have this really convenient thing here. Um, it's a fruit fly culture. So on the bottom is a media. It's usually specific to whoever makes the culture. Um, there's like mainstream products, but most people that sell them seem to make their own, which is really cool. Um, so it's basically like a base of to, uh, yeah, tapato, uh, potato starch, um, and then they just like mix in a few other things, which is really cool. Um, it's a self-contained unit, so in here are all life stages of fruit flies, which is really convenient. Um, this weird stuff here that looks like odd spaghetti is Excelsior, which is like a wood shaving, um, so it doesn't mold, it doesn't get weird, it doesn't get soft or gross or anything, it just kind of stays. Um, so once these get pretty full, kind of like these guys here, um, we can shake out all the excess flies and then dust them accordingly and feed them to our little frogs, which is really convenient. Frog kitchen. <laughs> no bug sweeping. Yeah, no bug sweeping. Just dump them in a cup and go. Very convenient. Fun breeding. Yeah, fun breeding stuff. Okay, so this... This is the pinnacle of my career, guys. <laughs> so these guys here are Solomon Island leaf frogs. I should have grabbed the parents. That would have been smart. Um, they are a very strange leaf-shaped frog from the Solomon Islands, where everything is weird. Um, they are super cool. Um, so you have these weird little leaf-shaped frogs, which are um, sexually dimorphic, so the males look different from the females. They're a little bit smaller, uh, typically a different color, um, and just, you know, different. Um, so these guys actually skip the tadpole stage. Um, wait, 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 say that again? They skip the tadpole stage. No. Crazy. So these guys, they will uh, actually just recently realize how they lay their eggs. They'll like well out a little spot in the dirt, um, typically somewhere where it's like slightly elevated, um, and then just deposit their eggs. Um, the male I've noticed like goes over there and he just sits on the eggs, probably does his little fertilization deal, and then they just kind of like hang around the nest. Um, cool. And then I think, I really should look up um, gestation on these guys, I'm not actually sure. Um, so they sit at egg form, however long they need to, um, and then they just hatch out as these tiny frogs, which is really, really, really cool. And defines um, what every video or discovery channel or anything has ever said in our entire lives. Exactly. And ruined yeah. our childhood. Yep. These guys are the anomaly. They're the dream crushers. Um, yeah, they're they're so cool. Um, I was not expecting to be as successful with these as I have been. Um, so I'm really proud of my little frog parents because they've just been rocking it. I think I have like 85 babies right now, which is Wait, just where are they? silly. Oh, okay. So this is, these are my original babies. This is the first um, batch that I got. Oh, um, oh look at them. They yeah. blend right in with the bottom. So yeah, they're really cool. They also have these weird little um, little pokey noses there. I used to have the actual word for them, but whatever. Um, so these guys are just, they're just so cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing else I can say about them other than they're so cool. They do come in other colors. Our group is a group of more normal brown and tan ones. Um, so I'm going to assume our babies are going to be similar to that, but you never know. How big do these guys get? These guys get to be about the, like, the females, maybe about three inches around, maybe a tiny bit more, and the males more like two, two and a half. Um, they're a little small. We can probably check out the parents if you want after. Um, but, yeah, so this one is, uh, they hatched out, I think, December 21st or something like that. Um, so they're just a few months old. And then, you're going here. Oh, and they've been eating fruit flies and springtails, which are really cool tiny bugs that you can keep in your enclosures. So guys, comment below. I want to know if you think Summer should get back into this stuff. See? <laughs> Do it. Um, but yeah, so these guys, um, these guys just touched out on the 25th of February. Oh my god. Hang on. I have to switch my lens for okay, this yeah. because these guys are absolutely Wait, tiny. There's a giant lot of the diet tire. Do you have tire. a salamander? I do. Do you want to use it? Yes. Kevin named her Mrs. Gumby. Mrs. Gumby. I actually have three salamanders in this room. One is estivating. I don't know when he's going to come back out, but I'm assuming it's sometime soon. And then I have a newly morphed male, and then I have Mrs. Gumby, who I'm trying to prep for breeding, so she's quite large right now. Salamanders she's are so cool. cool. She's precious. so cute. I love oh, her. Oh, these are like the ones that um, McCarthy's Wildlife has. Yeah, these they have a breeding pair. So great.
So in here we do have a tiger salamander, which is the largest land salamander, and they are from North America. Oh, look at her blinking. Yes, and this is Miss Gumby. <laughs> Miss Gumby, but she's not green. No, nope. But she is quite plump. She is wide. Yes, we're hoping to spawn these guys this year. Um, we actually got a bunch of the, uh, are they still neonates when they're babies? Whatever. We yeah. got a bunch of yeah, neonate um, tiger salamanders, so I was able to get a really nice male out of that group. And we have wonderful Mrs. Gumby here. Um, so I've just been feeding her a lot, which she's very happy about. Um, she's actually surprisingly interactive for being an amphibian. Um, so usually if I go over to where she is, she'll just like kind of come to the front of the tub and just wait and then start doing her weird little salamander dance thing. Um, and then she uh, very ineffectively eats a bunch of crickets. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a struggle and I'm surprised they can live in the wild. Um, but they do it and they're cute. It was pretty adorable watching yeah. them. I, I get asked that question a lot about baby vipers. Like, when you have to... <laughs> how does this survive? How, does this, how are these species not extinct? Well, yeah. there is a way. It is nature. Yep. yep. Nature happens. Survival of the fittest, truly. I think she would be able to, like, do well. Um, here, let me look at my spray so I can um, pick her up real quick so you can see her face. Summer, while we're waiting for the spray, do you want to do the salamander dance? <laughs> <laughs> really difficult yet. It's very advanced. Okay. It's what the white people do. Yeah. <laughs> Since we have uh, no moves. Yeah. So good. Yeah. They are extremely cute. Look at that face. Just, I feel like we should feed her. Yes. Just so we can watch her struggle. <laughs> In the nicest way possible. So... I always tend to make a lot of Pokemon references. Oh, it nice. literally has the same face as Ditto. Oh and when I talk God. about Pokemon, I talk about the original first generation Pokemon. But it literally has that Ditto face, just two eyes and a straight mouth. It's so cute. Just like, look, I mean, how, I don't know, you know, I just don't understand how they can exist. But, um,. And how more people don't have them as pets? Seriously, they're a great pet. I mean, with amphibians, it does require a bit of work. Um, they do need to be pretty clean. Um, she's actually bedded on the Reptisoil by Zoomed. Uh, it has like a fair amount of carbon in it, so I've noticed that's been helpful with like amphibian keeping. Um, and then super clean access to water. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, they just want to be fed. You yeah. know? So a uh, little nerd fact about the oh, and like that about the importance <laughs> of amphibians is a lot of the times when the environment is suffering and problems start um, arising amphibians are one of the first to start having effects from different things going on because they do have the porous skin and they live in both environments mm -hmm. so watching out for um, the amount of amphibians and stuff in your area can kind of uh, give you a hint about how stable and sustainable the environment is around you and that kind of stuff is important so keep an eye out kids oh. watch your critters <laughs> yeah let me go grab some food for her really fast oh she'll be so happy this is just um ro water <laughs> ro as in reverse osmosis thank you yep <laughs> Cool. So we're going to see if she wants to eat. She might not because I was just playing with her. But Oh, nope. She's gone. There you go. Well, yeah. Bro, oh, 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 oh. So much movement. Very little success. She's better at the salamander dance than I am. Yeah, she's really good at the salamander dance. Yeah, she's great. Coral's good at that. Yeah, oh. she is. Yeah. Look at that one on her head. Got it. Oh, gosh. It's going to eat your eyeball. She's like, I have a head. A very small head. Boop. I always feed my amphibians very small. Um, they seem to do better when you feed them smaller meals. I promise there's a noise in there, I'm not kidding. So, I think that is going to be it for our little amphibian slash anole episode. So, thank you, Nina, for You're showing welcome. us your prized collection. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Cool. We'll catch you guys later. As Will likes to say. <laughs> Subscribe if you are not already. <laughs> Smash that like button if you haven't already. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!
this. I'm going to get alcohol to do this. Three seconds of filming out of me. It'll be great. <laughs> so you're going to do talk about them first? Yeah, I guess we'll start over here. Okay. Um, what do they call this? And so what is your job title-ish? Um, my loose job title is reptile manager. Okay. Yep. Are you filming already? Yeah. William. You do it to well, me all the time. Robots. Yeah. No, you're good. Well, so just Hello. be like, just be like, Summer here, <laughs> and then introduce her, and then just go on to do what you're gonna do. Do I have to introduce myself? I can introduce you. <laughs> Whatever you wanna do, babe. We can use us scrambling. Yeah, right. Oh That'd God. be very genuine. Everyone's and gonna be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> all right. Um, since you're gonna be filming, fuck me. Hey guys. <laughs> this, is, this is good for me because I feel the same. So I feel this is nice. Kindred spirits here. All right. All right, guys. So we are here at Nerd in their media room this morning with Nina. The loose term is the reptile manager here. Sort of, yep. Yeah. So she's going to talk to us about some of the stuff in here that she uh, runs. I guess. Yeah, yep, yeah. manages, looks at, hugs. <laughs> Good. Just, okay. So what's going on guys? We are here. What are you why are you mouthing? I'm not. Oh my god. <laughs> it can be an intro of outtakes. It'll be so good. <sighs> okay. Don't move your lips because you're making me nervous. <laughs> Don't make me get the tripod. Stop it. Alright. I don't know, you guys want to put them back and then... Sure. Come on, bye-bye. It's like my whole foot. Oh, gosh, you're so cute. It's little blue toes. Ugh. Oh. So cute. I'm so happy you guys t you guys met. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so before the filming of this video, they had an hour-long conversation about horses. <laughs> <laughs> we did. It was very nice. Hello, Jake. <laughs> 